Jason's speech on how I stayed out of jail. And this is a segment in the storytelling manual on bringing history to life. It was a seven to nine minute speech and he was able to qualify at six and a half minutes. Was the plot of the story clear? Well, not exactly, and I'll explain. He was trying to stay out of jail, but why would he go to jail? Disturbing. Uh, okay, disturbing the peace, all right. Well, I, I didn't catch that part of it because it seemed like you were of age to drink. It seemed like all the folks that were in your house was of age to drink. And it was a private home, so I didn't get the part about disturbing the peace, so I missed that. So. so saying that, then that would be the plot of the story, so that would be perfectly clear then. To what degree did the speaker succeed in building the story to a climax? He started off at a very slow pace in, in the store where he worked, bored out of his mind, hating the music, and came up with a brilliant idea, called a friend, and it took off from there. So the momentum of the story went along quite nicely at a nice clip. And the climax, it was when the, the cops came. So he built that up layer after layer after layer quite nicely. How did the speaker develop the characters? Well, he talked about his friends, his cousins, the cops, the friend who called on the phone. And so he developed all these layers of friends and people that were part of the story. Did the speaker make effective use of description and dialogue in telling the story? He does that quite well, not only in this particular speech, but just about everything else he talks about. He's very descriptive in his language, and I really enjoy and appreciate that. He's talked about how tired he was at his job, the quiet neighborhood, the loud music, cigarette butts on the window still, still lit, beer bottles, Soho cups, red Soho cups, cops looking about, realizing afterwards the street was lined with cars. So all that is visual words in building the story, which was very, very, very nice. I really enjoyed that. Did you gain greater insight into the historical event or person the speaker was telling about? Yes, I did. I now know how mischievous Jason can truly be. Because this isn't the only story he shared with us about his adventures in the past. And OMG. You gotta watch out for you. It's the quiet ones, you gotta watch out for you, and you're it. <laughs> How effectively did the speaker use vocal variety while telling the story? And did the speaker display any distracting gestures or manner mannerisms? Well, I was, I was pleased that you just belted out that Christmas song, both of them. That was really, really nice because mm -hmm. it wasn't expected. It kind of woke us up and it broke the rhythm or the pattern of your story in the very beginning. So that's great. That's something that I need to work on. So I think overall your story, you, you sucked us all in your story. It, it's a history of your life in the past, which was part of what your chapter is about here. And as far as doing, doing it a little differently or a little better, I would like to see a little bit more movement. Now you, you do have a natural movement, but I think that if you could do away with podium sometime in a, in a future speech to see how you do, I'd like to see that. Because I've never seen you do that before. And that might be, be helpful to kind of expand coming out a little further in what, when you're speaking. But other than that, Jason, I think that you are a natural born comedian. I think, you, I think you missed your calling. And I think that if you could expand on that, you could really keep us in the, in the aisles rolling with laughter. So thank you very much for an insightful speech.